Nidhi Razdan, a prominent TV journalist in India, was about to give up her successful 20-year-long career. While her passion for delivering independent news never wavered, she was beginning to suffer from burnout and was sick of the endless trolling she received online. Then, an email that would change her life, an invitation to work at Harvard. Nidhi thought it was a dream come true and couldn't wait to begin the next chapter of her life. But was it too good to be true? Nidhi Razdan, a seasoned journalist in her early 40s, was at the peak of her career. She had worked hard for over two decades and was now the anchor of New Delhi TV's Primetime Bulletin, an independent news channel in India. She had amassed a million Twitter followers and was a well-known face in India. But 2019 had been a difficult year. The pressure of covering national elections and increasing political unrest had taken a toll and also made her and many other independent journalists the target of relentless trolling and harassment. Nidhi realized she needed to make a change. On the 14th of November 2019, Nidhi received an email that she thought was the answer to her problems. The sender introduced herself as Melissa Reeve. She was a student at Harvard University who was organizing a media seminar at the prestigious school and was hoping Nidhi could give a presentation. Intrigued, Nidhi sent a few emails back and forth with Melissa, who eventually introduced her to Tasif Ahmed, another Harvard student and organizer of the event. A few email exchanges later, Tasif revealed that there was actually a permanent job opening at Harvard that might be suitable for Nidhi. A quick Google search led her to believe it was a journalist faculty position at the university's extension school, which has hired working journalists in the past. Nidhi was highly experienced in the field, so she felt confident that she would be a strong candidate for the position. Eager to pursue this exciting opportunity, Nidhi followed the steps outlined by Tasif and submitted her resume. She then completed an online interview that took 90 minutes. The questions were all professional and fairly typical. Before she knew it, Nidhi was on the phone with Bharat Anand, a vice provost at Harvard, but they never had a video call. Nidhi advanced through and was asked to provide references. So she asked some colleagues to help out. Each person she enlisted received an official looking email with a link to upload recommendation letters to harvardcareers.com. Nobody questioned the authenticity of this process. It was now January, 2020, just before the world would be flung into chaos. An email from Harvard's HR department had just appeared in Nidhi Razan's inbox. She had gotten the job. Her excitement kept building as she read the email. Her classes would be starting in September and she was offered a yearly salary of $151,000, which was a significant increase from her NDTV pay. The letterhead, university insignia, and even virtual signatures from the real senior Harvard officials confirmed the legitimacy of the position. The Harvard HR department sent over lengthy contracts and forms for Nidhi to sign. They contained information about everything from her visa and health insurance to the discounts she could get at Boston museums. She willingly shared all the personal information that was asked of her by her new employer, including her passport details, medical records, bank account numbers, and so on. She filled out all the official Harvard paperwork as she pictured her new life as a professor. Little did she know that the forms she was filling out were pulled from Harvard's official website by someone trying to scam her. In June 2020, Nidhi publicly announced that she was leaving NDTV for a new chapter as a Harvard professor. The news generated significant media attention in India and congratulatory messages flooded in from the country's biggest names, politicians, fellow journalists, and even other TV personalities. Nidhi proudly displayed the official Harvard Twitter handle in her bio and even appeared on TV with her new designation of associate professor. She avidly discussed her plans to teach courses like the ethics of journalism and how to report on foreign policy. When September rolled around, Nidhi was told that her classes were going to be delayed due to the confusion caused by the ongoing global situation, but she would still get paid. Her classes were pushed back to October, then January the next year. Her patience was wearing thin and she was finally starting to realize that something was wrong. Nidhi Razan had been promised payment from September onward for her new job as a Harvard associate professor. 
but weeks then months passed without a paycheck coming in. The scammers used the global situation many times as an excuse for the delays. Nitty was understanding at first, but she soon grew frustrated with the seemingly endless administrative process. She was asked to install TeamViewer, a software that allows remote computer access. Wanting to be helpful and cooperative, Nitty downloaded and installed TeamViewer, unaware that she had just granted scammers unrestricted access to the files on her laptop. Nitty received multiple invitations to Zoom calls with Emma Dench, the Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences at Harvard, but the calls would always get cancelled and the excuses grew increasingly absurd. By December, Nitty was palpably annoyed by what she perceived to be flakiness and lack of organization. She could understand to an extent bureaucracy and red tape and disruptions caused by the global situation, but what she was going through just didn't seem right. Finally, in early January 2021, Nitty wrote directly to Emma Dench, only to be informed by a confused assistant that there were no Zoom calls scheduled and nobody was aware of Nitty's new position. Believing there had been some kind of administrative mix-up, Nitty replied back attaching the numerous emails, documents, and contracts in an attempt to clear things up with the dean. Later that night, Nitty received an email from the dean's office that made her blood run cold. There is no record of, nor any knowledge of, your name or your appointment. There wasn't even a journalism department at Harvard at all. Panicked, Nitty sought help from a cybersecurity firm in India. A forensic analysis was conducted on her laptop and devices, and it was revealed that her email had been hacked and malicious software had been installed. Job scams have become a booming industry in India. In 2017 alone, 30,000 people in India fell victim to fake job offers, and the problem was exacerbated by the global situation of early 2020. These scams predominantly target vulnerable young people and recent graduates, luring them with the promise of non-existent jobs then demanding money for expenses like recruitment fees, equipment, and security deposits. But Nidhi Razdan's case was different. She was a high-profile public figure and most likely specifically targeted for some reason. It was clear that significant planning and effort had gone into this phishing attack, but bizarrely, the scammers didn't steal any of her money data, or identity. Nitty reported the phishing attack to the police. Finding out exactly who was behind the scam was the next challenge. The scammers had strategically purchased harvardcareer.com from GoDaddy and opted for privacy protection, as that obscured their names from public registries of website owners. They set up a Microsoft email server, enabling them to send messages that appeared to be from Harvard. Nitty released a statement on NDTV's website candidly sharing the details of her ordeal. She knew that she would be heavily mocked and criticized for her naivety, but she felt compelled to shed light on her experience. She also handed over every text message, email, and fake document to Harvard, and urged the school to take the matter seriously, as real employees were being impersonated. After Nitty went public, it soon became apparent that she had not been the only one targeted by these scammers. Whoever the scammer or scammers were, they were very good at covering their tracks. They had created a web of personas across various platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, and WhatsApp, to pursue their targets for months at a time. And unlike the majority of scam artists, their goal was not financial gain. First, some context to explain why this scam may have taken place. Kashmir is the northernmost region in the South Asia subcontinent and also the source of long-standing conflict between India and Pakistan. It is a Muslim-majority territory that has been plagued by violence and unrest for decades. In August 2019, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi suddenly revoked Kashmir's autonomy, instantly raising tensions with Pakistan. The Indian government, sensitive to any form of criticism, launched a preemptive crackdown on critics by cutting the internet in Kashmir. On the 5th of August 2019, more than 2,000 influential Kashmiris were thrown in jail, including politicians, business leaders, human rights leaders, and even students as young as 14. It was one of the largest mass arrests of civilian leaders in decades. It was around this time that journalist Rohini Singh received a Twitter DM from a Harvard student. 
Rohini Singh was another prominent independent journalist in India. She had nearly a million Twitter followers and was a contributor to the online publication The Wire. She was also a vocal critic of India's Hindu nationalist government. Tasif Ahmed, the same person who brought up the Harvard job to Nidhi, reached out to Rohini and they casually chatted about their shared hometown of Lucknow. Then, Tasif invited Rohini to participate in an all-expenses-paid media conference he was organizing at Harvard. He introduced her to another organizer, Alex Hirschman, who emailed her from a Gmail account rather than a harvard.edu address. Tasif and Alex also both used non-US phone numbers. When they asked Rohini for her passport details, she realized it was a scam and promptly broke off communication. After Nidhi Razdan had shared her experience with the public, political commentator Zainab Sikanda realized she had also been targeted by the same scammers. Like the other women, Zainab had written criticisms of the Indian government's actions in Kashmir. In mid-August, she had also received a Twitter DM from Tasif Ahmed with the same offer to speak at Harvard. Zainab sensed that something was amiss and requested a formal invitation from the university. But of course, it never came, so she cut off contact. Two other women came forward with similar stories. One was a journalist who was interviewed by the New York Times but chose to remain anonymous. She had quickly realized it was a scam when Tasif and Alex both provided UAE phone numbers. In November 2019, Neghat Abbas, a lawyer and government spokesperson, received an invitation from Harvard, but this time, the scammers had upped their game. They had copied email signatures from real Harvard employees and swiped the official letterhead from the university's website. Neghat became suspicious when she was asked for her passport details and other personal information, so she decided to contact Harvard directly. A real Harvard program coordinator responded and told her the invitation was fake. Eager to help catch the scammers, Neghat shared every message, email, and fake document with Harvard and warned others about Tasif and the phishing scam in a video posted on Twitter. It's unclear whether or not Harvard investigated or took any action. Because in that same month, Nidhi Razdan was contacted for the first time, and the scammers had ironed out many of the red flags that their previous targets had detected. Around this time, a new Twitter profile popped up under the name Seema Singh. She claimed to be a coder, then later a banker, and regularly tweeted pro-nationalist rants. She also sent bizarre, sexually aggressive messages to Zainab, Nikat, and other high-profile women who spoke out against the government. The discovery of this account led to more speculation that the individual or group behind the Harvard scam was aligned with India's nationalist ruling party and was willing to go to extreme lengths to humiliate critics of the government. Perhaps, the scammers could even be backed by the Indian government. Other theories about the scammer's identity suggest involvement from foreign governments. The scammers used UAE phone numbers and analysis of Nidhi Razdan's computer revealed an IP address once linked to a hacking group associated with Pakistani intelligence. Investigators came across suspicious websites posting as career pages for Ivy League universities, including Harvard, that were registered in China. However, neither Twitter nor Facebook found evidence of state-sponsored involvement when they banned the scammers' fake accounts. GoDaddy, where the HarvardCareers.com domain was purchased, declined to identify the customer without a court order. The incidents also raised questions about Harvard's lack of action, even after they were explicitly warned that the scammers were impersonating their staff and students and stealing their official branding. Unfortunately, we have to leave you with an unsatisfying ending this time, as the identities of the scammers still remain a secret.